Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to execute Linux shell script in Jenkins using Jenkins pipeline. In the previous video, we have already seen how to execute a shell script in Jenkins using freestyle job. In this video, we are going to implement the same using Jenkins pipeline. Here, we will consider four scenarios. We will see how to execute a script which is present in the Jenkins agent and how to execute a script which is present in version control tool like git and how to send the parameters to the shell script which will be executed as part of Jenkins pipeline and also we will see how to collect the status and output of the shell script in the Jenkins pipeline. Let us start. Let us consider the first scenario, the execution of script which is present in the Jenkins agent. So for this let us create a new item in the Jenkins. Here I am giving name as demo2. Here we need to choose the pipeline. Click OK. We will keep the default project options and we can select pipeline here. Here the pipeline can be executed in two ways. One is the pipeline script which is present in the job itself or we can keep the pipeline script within the SCM. So for this demo I will directly put the script inside this job. Let us write the skeleton of the pipeline. So within the pipeline we need to mention the agent in which we will execute the script. So we need to identify the label of the agent. So this is our agent with label agent linux. So let us give the same name in the pipeline. So now we need to write the stages which will be executed as part of the pipeline. Here we need to provide the name of the stage. So here I have provided the name as execute shell script. We can provide any name. So within the stage we need to provide the steps. So here we need to provide the actual step for executing the shell script. So for this, so let me open this demo2 in a new tab. Here we can go to the pipeline syntax. So here the steps section contains all the steps which can be executed as part of the pipeline. Here let us choose the sh step for executing the shell script. So here we need to provide the path of the shell script. So for that let us go to the agent. So for this demo I will create an example directory. I will provide host name as the command. Here demo2.sh is the shell script. We can verify the contents. So let us get the path of the script and generate the pipeline script. So let us copy this step and this step we can directly copy inside the steps here. So here we mentioned two steps. One is echo step which will print executing demo shell script and in the second step we mentioned the actual step for executing the shell script. So let us apply and save and let us try to build the pipeline. So now the pipeline is getting executed. Here we can see that we have got the error permission denied. That means we need to provide the permission to execute the script. So let us change our pipeline again. So here we can add a separate sh step for providing the permission or we can directly provide the command within the same step. So let us enter within the same step here using chmod command and we need to separate the commands using semicolon. So this command will provide the permission and this is for executing the shell script. So let us apply and save. Let us build the pipeline again. So now we can see that it is successful. We can verify the console output. This is providing permission on the script and here this is executed successfully and printed the host name of the agent. And this is how we can execute a shell script which is present in the agent. Now let us consider the second scenario in which the script is present in the git. In this scenario we will check out the git repository into the agent using Jenkins pipeline. Once we get the repository in the agent then the execution step will be similar as in the previous scenario. This is the example repository we will use for this demo. Here we have example2.sh. So this will print hello world from github repository. So let us try to execute this script within our pipeline. So let us change the configuration of the pipeline. So here let us add a new stage for checking out the git repository within the agent. So here I am changing the echo step. So here we need to add a step for checking out the actual git repository. 
So for that, let us go to pipeline syntax again. So here we need to select the step corresponding to gate. So here we need to provide the repository URL. For that, let us copy the repository. And the branch is main. Here we need to select the credentials to connect to the git repository. And let us generate the pipeline script. So this is the step we need to copy within the pipeline. So using these steps, we will get the git repository within the agent. In the next stage, we need to change our steps to execute the script. So here this is fine. But these steps we need to change. By default when we check out the repository, and that repository will be present in the workspace. So that means whatever scripts we execute, those are related to the workspace. So we need to provide the permission relative to workspace. So let us provide here the dollar workspace. And this example2.sh will be directly under example repo. So that means this will be directly under workspace. So this command will provide the execute permission on the script example2.sh which will be present in workspace. So let us copy the same path for execution as well. Let us save this configuration and execute. So let us see the console output. In the first stage, it will check out the repository. So this is the first stage content. And in the second stage, it executed the demo shell script. Here we can see that it has printed the path relative to the workspace. So this is the workspace for this job. And this is the script. And here we can see that the script is successfully executed. So this is the way how we can execute a shell script which is present in the git repository in Jenkins pipeline. Now let us see how to send the parameters to the shell script from the pipeline. Here in the repository, we have one more example script. Here this script is expecting two parameters. One is environment and db name. Once these parameters are assigned, this will print the environment as well as the db name. So how to send these parameters to this script from the pipeline? So for sending the parameters, we need to change the configuration. Let us click on the pipeline. Here we need to change our pipeline to send the parameters. So for that, let us click on pipeline syntax. In the step section, we need to select properties. Here we need to select the project is parameterized. Here we need to add the parameters. So here we need to send two parameters. One is environment and db name. So the environment will be a choice parameter. So let us select choice parameter and enter environment. Let us add the choices here and let us add one more parameter database name. So here I am giving db name. So these are the two parameters we will send to the shell script. Let us generate the pipeline script. So we need to copy this within our configuration. So here let us create a new stage for these parameters. So here let us write steps. So in the steps we need to add this code. So this is a groovy function. Whenever we are calling any groovy function in the declarative pipeline, we need to add a script tag. So let us add a script tag here. Within the script tag, this code needs to be present. Now the code for parameters is ready. We need to use these parameters within our pipeline. So here we need to change this stage as well for sending the parameters. Here instead of example2.sh, we need to use example sh script. In addition to that, we need to send these parameters. So while accessing the parameters, we need to use the curly braces here and params dot the parameter name. Here the first parameter name is environment. Similarly, we need to send the second parameter as well. So this is db underscore name. In addition to the parameters, here we need to change the single code to double quotes so that these parameters will be replaced correctly. Let us save the job configuration and execute the build. After adding the parameters, the build after changing the configuration will not accept parameters. So the parameters will be taken from the next build onwards. So let us execute the build again. So this time it will ask the parameters. This time it has asked the parameters. And we can provide the db name here. And execute the build. Now we can see that from the fifth build, 
you can see the parameters so here from the console output we can see that the parameters are sent successfully and those parameters are successfully printed by the shell script this is the way we can send the parameters to the shell script from the pipeline so the next one is collecting the output and status of the shell script within the pipeline for this again we'll use the example.sh so as of now we don't have any issues with the script that means the status should be successful let us try to print the status within our pipeline so for that we need to change the configuration so in the pipeline we need to change this sh step let me comment out the existing step and enter a new step here we'll have a new sh step so when we try to get the status of any script within sh there is an option called return status so we have to use that so let us mention return status so this should be true so for what we are getting the status that we need to specify as a script so here the script should be whatever command we have executed earlier so let me copy here so now using this step we can get the status but we need to assign this status to a variable so let me assign that so when we try to assign something to a variable within the pipeline we need to use like a groovy variable and we should keep this statement within the script tag and we can print the status here so let me try to print the status so this will return a status of this command and that status will be assigned to your status variable and we are printing it so if it is successful this will be zero otherwise it will be a non zero value so let us try to execute and print this status so here it has printed null that means we have done something wrong so here we can see that unknown parameter i think the spelling is wrong let me change that and again execute so now we can see that the status is zero that means our shell script does not have any problem let us change the shell script to add a statement with wrong syntax something like a is equal to b plus c so now the script is changed let us try to execute again so now we can see that the status is 127 which is a non zero value so even though it is non zero value the job is successful so we need to change the pipeline again to finish with failure whenever whenever the status is non zero so let us change the pipeline again so here we can add a if condition so here i am adding status is equal to 0 that means the job is successful the job is failed so if the job is failed we need to exit with one so let us add a sh step here exit one so save this configuration and execute the job again here we can see the message job is failed and also the job is failed we have seen how to get the status in addition to the status we also can get the output as well from the shell script let us see that so for this let us change the script here we have removed a is equal to b plus c and when we execute the script so these will be printed and these are the output in the script so let us save the script so now let us change the pipeline to capture the output from the script so here before getting the status let us get the output as well so let me copy and paste here here instead of status let us put output instead of return status we need to provide return std out so when we place return std out here the output of the script will be assigned to the output variable let us try to print the output variable let us apply this configuration and execute here from the output we can see that when the echo statement is executed the output is printed to the output of the shell script and after that again the script is executed and the status is printed so this way using return std out and return status we can capture the output of a shell script within the jenkins pipeline so in this video we have covered all the four scenarios i hope this video helps thanks a lot for watching